Uh, well, uh, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Tamer Rojdi, Assistant Professor of Neurology at Shams University, Cairo, Egypt. Uh, first of all, I am very pleased to uh, participate in the MINESO uh, Congress, and I hope that we may uh, meet physical soon after defeating uh, COVID-19. My uh, presentation is uh, on the Egyptian experience with COVID-19 and stroke. Uh, this is my uh, disclosures. First of all, uh, let me introduce our enemy, a severe acute respiratory syndrome of coronavirus 2, which is abbreviated as SAR as SARS-CoV-2, emerged in Yuhan province in China around December 2019. It was not yet uh, until March 2020 when it was declared as a pandemic by the WHO. Uh, since, it's, uh, uh, since its declaration, more than 241 million have caught the virus, with more than 4.5 uh, million uh, deaths. Uh, what makes SARS-CoV-2 a challenging virus is that it does not affect only uh, the respiratory system, but it also may affect other body systems, including the nervous system, which is uh, in the core of such infection. Moreover, the virus is a novel virus to the human immune system, and the human uh, body immunity reacts to it in a diverse response, with some patients requiring hospitalization up to intensive care unit admission, and this places healthcare systems under continuous uh, pressure. Around 33% uh, of individuals who catch SARS-CoV-2 have neurological manifestations, whether central or peripheral. Although there is no official numbers speaking on SARS-CoV-2 and strokes, yet all of us have witnessed cases having a positive PCR and stroke or just recovering from COVID-19 with a positive IgG and a negative IgM and they developed a stroke and some of them have a new explainable modifiable vascular risk factors. Along the uh, coming slides, I will pass along Egyptian experience with COVID-19 and uh, stroke. Uh, yet before uh, beginning my uh, uh, publications uh, regarding COVID-19 in the uh, uh, Egyptian uh, perspective, uh, let me first uh, uh, pass with you along this uh, curve, which is representing the official numbers of uh, COVID-19 cases in Egypt and the uh, three uh, waves. And currently we are along the fourth uh, wave of the COVID-19 as well. Uh, Egypt and Ain Shams journey or experience with COVID-19 passed through uh, seven uh, uh, publications. The first one was under the term stroke in time of coronavirus disease 2019. Second one was a case series of ischemic stroke cases with coronavirus disease 2019. A review on SARS-CoV-2 and stroke pathogenesis and outcome was our third publication. Global impact of COVID-19 on stroke care and the intravenous thrombolysis was a multicentric uh, study uh, that Egypt participated uh, in and pre-hospital causes for delayed arrival in acute ischemic stroke before and during COVID-19 pandemic were, uh, was our uh, fifth publication along the experience with COVID-19 and stroke. The sixth one was a case series of post-COVID-19 mucormycosis. And finally, uh, SARS-CoV-2 and stroke characteristics, which was also a multinational COVID-19 uh, study uh, group. During our journey hand by hand with COVID-19, we tried to knock on all uh, possible doors. We aimed at uh, saving lives and saving time, study stroke and COVID, maintain our performance and assess any decline and of course, correcting it. Our first uh, on the run stop with COVID-19 was our publication, A Stroke in the Time of Coronavirus Disease 2019, which was uh, published uh, uh, in the Journal of Stroke. And it was actually prior to the declaration of the pandemic. Uh, uh, since Egypt uh, waves are usually occurring secondary uh, or a, a long uh, third uh, point with uh, Asia first being encountering COVID-19, Europe uh, began to encounter COVID-19 and then the wave will appear in Egypt. And this was uh, uh, similar along the different waves. And so we were uh, uh, 
uh, following what is taking place, for example, in Italy, and we decided to uh, change our pathway or modified our pathway so as to uh, maintain two goals. First, the lives of the patient to be maintained as well as the life of the medical staff and also saving time was another goal since time is brain. So providing ultimate therapy, including thrombolysis and thrombectomy was to be maintained by any uh, means. Uh, this is the uh, pathway which we uh, modified. Initially, we usually uh, uh, meet the patient along the ER and perform then uh, CT brain. And after performing CT brain, we will uh, assess the time of the onset and time of arrival and we'll divide the patient into three uh, pathways. Either the patients who are arriving beyond a uh, window of thrombolysis or thrombectomy or those arriving within a window of thrombectomy but beyond the uh, window of thrombolysis or those arriving within window of thrombolysis and thrombectomy. But because of COVID-19, we were uh, pushed to uh, administer also CT chest as well as swabs and labs prior to administering any thrombolysis or thrombectomy for the patient. So uh, initially, the patient were uh, being assessed in the triage suspected cases by history uh, that they are suffering from COVID-19, for example, having fever, uh, uh, sore throat, uh, dyspnea, cough, or any constitutional symptoms, were uh, uh, ordered swabs and labs and CT uh, brain and CT chest, and then they were uh, classified into either one of three pathways. Those beyond the six-hour window were admitted to isolation unit until the result of the swabs, or those within the window, either thrombolysis or thrombectomy, will receive their op optimum uh, treatment and again will be admitted to an isolation unit until the result of these swabs. The uh, results of the swab will then uh, pass the patient along two pathways, either a uh, positive swab that is transferred to the quarantine hospital. And I am glad that to declare that uh, Ain Shams University was uh, a pioneer in this field where uh, Ain Shams provided three uh, different and separate quarantine hospitals beside the ordinary university hospital and the specialized hospital that are dealing with uh, COVID free cases. And those patients who are negative by the swabs are transferred to the stroke unit where they uh, will pass along the, uh, the uh, protocol, usual protocol to assess the uh, causes behind the stroke and provide secondary prevention. And along one and a half years since official WHO declaration of pandemic in March 2020, the pathway is running with no single patient in window being lost. Yet secondary to virus different strains and not more than 70% sensitivity of PCR, breakthrough in admission of COVID-19 cases occasionally occurs. Yet transfer to quarantine hospital takes place on a regular uh, basis. The uh, second uh, experience or the second publication was a case series of ischemic stroke with coronavirus disease 2019. Although we are a COVID-free hospital, and we only deal with the COVID cases uh, once encountered in the ER and the isolation unit prior to uh, uh, transferring the patient into the quarantine hospitals. Yet, we usually meet such cases, uh, at least cross-sectional uh, uh, meeting. And along this case series, we provided 10 cases were presented in 2020 along the first wave. Seven cases received RTPE with an average door to needle uh, time 30 minutes, which I think is an optimum uh, time of injection. Uh, despite uh, suffering COVID-19 and fear of catching COVID-19 by the medical staff themselves, uh, one case an, uh, has an excellent recovery with MRS0. Five cases had an MRS less than or equal to. Two cases had an MRS of four, and unfortunately, two cases uh, died. Out of uh, this uh, case series, I think it was uh, the, one of the first uh, case series to represent RTP injection in COVID uh, cases, uh, as well as one of uh, first publication to assess the introduction of anticoagulation, for example, of L, uh, in case of a cardioembolic stroke. Uh, if we follow the rule of one, three, six, and 12 uh, days prior administrating the uh, anticoagulation, Yet in such case series, we provided anticoagulation a little bit uh, in an earlier uh, phase uh, and not following such rule. Because uh, in along the first waves of the uh, pandemic, the D-dimer was usually uh, uh, considered as a sign of coagulation. And so we were obliged to administer anticoagulation fast enough. 
The third uh, publication was a review on a SARS-CoV-2 and stroke pathogenesis. Uh, all of us know that uh, pathogenesis behind SARS-CoV-2 and its associated stroke are uh, uh, plenty and are uh, diverse in presentation. Yet we uh, were trying to uh, analyze three uh, main points, which are renin angiotensin system and angiotensin II converting enzyme down regulation, endothelial cell damage and coagulopathy, cytokine storm and uh, platelets. Uh, let me first uh, speak upon uh, the renin angiotensin system and angiotensin uh, converting enzyme to down regulation. In irregular circumstances, when there is a hypovolemia or there is hypotension, angiotensinogen, which is converted from the liver, is converted uh, or acted upon by the renin that is uh, uh, secreted by the kidneys uh, and convert it into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is converted by angiotensin converting enzyme from uh, the lungs into the uh, vasoconstrictor uh, uh, potent angiotensin 2. Such as angiotensin 2 will cause a vasoconstriction in the blood vessels and will reverse the uh, uh, hypovolemia and the hypotension and uh, restabilize the blood pressure. And after performing its action, it is usually uh, converted or acted upon by angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor that are abundant within endothelial cells to angiotensin 17 that is a vasodilator. Unfortunately, COVID-19 entrance into uh, the cells is through such angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptors. And this causes a down regulation of such angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptors with a, a result of an unopposed action of angiotensin 2. And this will result in an unopposed uh, uh, rise in the blood pressure that will uh, ultimately may uh, cause either form of strokes, whether hemorrhagic or uh, ischemic. Entrance of COVID-19 into endothelial cells may uh, cause damage into the endothelial uh, cell lining, and this will cause dysfunction and disruption of the endothelial cells. Endothelial cells are responsible for uh, secreting a plenty of substances that are responsible for uh, maintaining a blood clot uh, so as to uh, stabilize a clot. Uh, or preventing excessive coagulation and thrombosis. And uh, disruption and dysfunction of endothelial cells will cause uh, thrombomodulin reduction, plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 overproduction, von Willebrand factor excess production, and all of these factors will be responsible for more coagulopathy and uh, uh, also endothelial cell damage may uh, aggravate platelet and cause them to over uh, 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 be aggravated over the endothelial cells and this will cause further thrombosis. Also, endothelialopathy and endothelial breakdown may uh, uh, weaken the blood vessel and uh, causing a rupture in a blood vessel, and this will uh, uh, further uh, be a responsible cause for uh, hemorrhagic uh, strokes. Also, endothelial cell lining, the entrance, uh, the uh, inner aspect of the cardiac muscle, and their damage may uh, cause endothelialitis, may cause myocarditis and arrhythmia, and this will also may result in thrombosis and cardioembolic source for strokes associated with COVID-19. Inflammation enhances platelet to release its inorganic phosphate residue, which is termed poly P. Poly P stabilizes clot and make it more resistant to lysis, and this will uh, aggravate more ischemic stroke to develop. Also, cytokines and chemokines are released in excess to the novel virus with activation of macrophage and net result more coagulopathy, endocellulopathy, and immunothrombosis. Uh, Another uh, on the run stop was the uh, fourth one actually, uh, was the pre-hospital causes for delay arrival in acute ischemic stroke before and during COVID-19. Along this uh, publication that was published in, along PLOS One, we uh, analyzed cases that arrived prior to the declaration of COVID-19 and through a survey, we assessed the cause of delay in arrival behind four hours of the stroke onset. And once the uh, stroke as the COVID-19 pandemic was de uh, declared, we also analyzed the cases that arrived beyond the window yet within the COVID-19 era. The commonest cause behind delay pre-COVID was receiving treatment in a non-stroke hospital, while the major cause in delay arrival in COVID was fear of infection and lockdown issues. Meanwhile, non-realization of urgency and stroke during sleep were common in COVID and pre-COVID periods.
Along this uh, publication, uh, knowledge about stroke symptoms from media was also so obvious in the COVID period with a p-value of uh, less than 0.001, which actually we, uh, may uh, be a, a possible way so as to increase awareness to stroke symptoms, whether uh, in relation to COVID-19 or uh, uh, not related to COVID-19. Along this uh, conclusion from the pre-hospital causes for delayed arrival in acute ischemic stroke before and during COVID-19 pandemic publication, we uh, may uh, use such results so as to increase awareness as I stated uh, earlier. A case series of post-COVID-19 mucormycosis was also one of our Egyptian experience with COVID-19. The third wave in India revealed another complication associated with COVID-19, which is serious and nearly fatal if not managed properly and timely, which is mucormycosis. Mucormycosis is a rare opportunistic angio-invasive fungal infection that affect immunocompromised patients. And although not much reported in Egypt, yet it was encountered also along the third wave of the uh, pandemic. Uh, in Shams University Specialized uh, Hospital, which is the hospital where I am uh, working, is a COVID-free hospital uh, that do, do not deal with COVID cases. Yet, we uh, face post-COVID mucormycosis along cases that were un, uh, suffering from uncontrolled diabetes or uh, receiving large doses of steroid while being treated from uh, COVID. The reason for calling neurologist and the stroke center involvement in such cases uh, is actually so as to exclude cavernous sinus thrombosis. Yet, uh, mycormycosis is a multidisciplinary uh, team uh, management uh, 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 emergency being managed by plastic surgery, neurosurgery, and ENT specialists. Along this case series, uh, all cases suffered rhino or cerebral form of mucormycosis, besides one case had an additional cutaneous form. Only one case had a cavernous sinus thrombosis that was responsible for the ophthalmoplegia that uh, uh, was suffering from. The rest had either orbital cellulitis or orbital apex syndrome that required involvement of the ophthalmologist besides the other uh, specialists. Unfortunately, along this uh, experience, uh, one case died prior to any surgical deprivement, and such case was the one who was suffering cutaneous form besides the uh, orbitorhinocerebral form, and it was, uh, sh uh, she was a female patient that presented to the uh, uh, ER of Ayn Shams University Specialized Hospital after uh, uh, 21 days from the initial symptoms of, of salmoplegia. And so it uh, uh, was obvious that she was presenting so late uh, so, uh, to be managed properly. The only case that was totally cured was the one with sinus uh, thrombosis. Within this case series, we observed some interesting findings. Hyponatremia was detected along all cases with varying degrees. Low serum sodium is common with bacterial and viral infection, as we all know, yet it is rarely reported in fungal infections. One case had a reduction in visual acuity with evidence of demyelinating signal along ipsilateral optic nerve as well. Uh, the last two uh, uh, publications that were, were actually a multinational uh, uh, or multi-centric uh, global uh, uh, publications, one was published in stroke and the other was published in neurology, uh, were speaking upon SARS-CoV-2 and stroke characteristics and global impact of COVID-19 on stroke care and intravenous thrombolysis. From their conclusion, we found that uh, COVID-19 actually hit uh, the uh, entire world uh, so, uh, uh, obviously, or uh, in a very uh, uh, serious way. So, as the primary stroke centers as well as the tertiary stroke centers suffered a, a, a steep decline in uh, cases presenting with stroke, uh, whether because of fear of of catching the COVID-19 or because of delay in arrival because of any other uh, associated factors, uh, uh, yet such uh, centers uh, recovery was later undetected within the uh, later months of the pandemic. Uh, also, along the other publication, which was uh, in the uh, stroke journal, there was an evidence that large vessel occlusion was very common in uh, COVID-19 associated strokes rather than small vessel uh, uh, occlusions. 
Uh, finally, and also our hospital is a COVID-free hospital, as I stated earlier, yet uh, COVID-associated stroke encountered in ER prior to referral to quarantine hospital, we observed that they are large vessel stroke, they were uh, multi-territorial stroke, posterior circulation stroke, and uh, presentation was uh, with seizure was uh, very common along such type of uh, cases. Uh, and finally, thank you and stay safe. Get your vaccine dose to end the global experience with COVID-19 and uh, a stroke. And thank you.